Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com with 2023-24 Panini Donner's Optic Basketball six box, pick your team number six. Jazbeescasebreaks.com, big thanks to this lovely group here, thank you. On a Chew Tuesday, be cool to see some train whistles out of here. Pick your team six, six box number six. Sean, last bot mojo, rooftop symbols next year, and that means you won those teams in the filler. Thanks everyone for making this happen. So remember, we marked all you can kind of see right here, number six. So we know they're from the same case. Looking for these ultra rare inserts. Looking for one auto a box, a bunch of parallels. My Dodgers down five to the Rockies of all teams, top of the seventh. But a game with a life sporting event with slightly more significance is this. Stanley Cup Final. Start of the third period, Edmonton's up by two goals. They're facing elimination. They're, they're trying to extend it another game. Not sure if it looks bad for Aaron Judge, Rex. I think, uh, I mean, I didn't see the play though. Right, Simon, exactly. That's what pitchers would probably say. Get off the plate. Yeah, head and face stuff, I think, is definitely different. But anywhere below that, you know, especially if it was a pitch that, you know, they're putting pounding him inside, and I'm like, hey, get off the plate then. I mean, professional athletes, Rex, are, they're, they're different animals. They can compartmentalize a lot of things. You know, you, can, you gotta shrug off moments like, you gotta shrug, I mean, think about closers. They might have the, they might be the most mentally tough in Major League Baseball to be a closer. Even the most physically gifted of ball players, the best are always the ones that that have the mental toughness at, at the professional level, anyway. You know, at that level, what sets you apart from other guys that are just as talented as you? Definitely be the uh, excuse me, second. Definitely be the I, the IQ, the mental toughness, the work ethic, all that sort of stuff. I don't know. I think Yamamoto is at least shut down for a month, month and a half. I think two weeks before he definitely, he, before they even have him throw a baseball. And then however long after that. We got Chris Livingston for the Bucks. Chris Livingston, I presume. Going to Brian Kay in Milwaukee. 61 out of 79. So now, what are, what are the? Let's do a little post mortem. What do the Mavs have to do to get to get back to where they need to be? At a one forty nine, there's Jordan Walsh for the Celtics, the World Champs. I'm gonna sleeve all of those a little bit later, just to save a little time for the video. Run this, go a little bit more quickly here. Jordan Clarkson to seventy nine. That's for Utah. That'll be for Tristan. There's a lights out hollow, Victor Wembanyama. That's going to be for Sean Maddock and the Spurs. Whoa, Florida Panthers goal. Now they're only down by one. Here's Scotty Barnes, 99 for Toronto. There's a Dominators. Victor Wembenyama. This is not hollow, just base level one though, Sean, but all of these add up.
There's Max Trust to 199. There's Jalen McDaniels to 249. And Amen Thompson, Rising Suns. Did we not see? Oh, we did see the auto. It was Chris Livingston. Auto popped early. Rex is asking, wonder how many times pitchers and catchers decide to hit a player without a coach or manager's approval? Or how many times the coach or manager tell them to do so? I don't know. That's a good question. I think it depends on the team. I want to say that this day and age, most managers are not authorizing a batter to get hit. And a lot of times I feel like pitchers don't intentionally hit players because they don't they don't get punished, right? Who gets punished? If you if I throw if I throw at a hitter and I'm a I'm a pitcher, right? I throw at a hitter. I plunk a hitter in the in the thigh, in the butt or something like that. Guess what? When the retaliation happens, it's not me. It's my my buddies on the hitting side that are that are being retaliated against. So I don't think there's a lot of uh, I, don't, I don't think that I don't think it happens too often. You gotta think about situations too. What, what situationally? Why, why are pitchers throwing at hitters? You know, maybe. I think back in the day, you know, maybe as recently as like ten years ago, you know, you don't celebrate as like a home run as much, right? Pitchers got sensitive about that, bat flips or this and that. And then next time the player's up, then then you know maybe there's a pitch towards the the ribs or something. But now celebrating is so common that I don't think. I think a lot of pitchers don't take offense to that as much nowadays. What would you have to do? I mean... Yeah, but even trash talk I feel like is so so much more common now. And no one's gonna throw at a... You, you, wanna, you wanna strike out the guy. Not, not hit the guy. How many times is a pitcher pressured into doing it? I don't think so. I don't think a pitcher is pressured into doing it because of trash talk. But if a pitcher on the other side hit your guy and, it w and you know, you kind of know when it's intentional or malicious or not. If that happens, you know, then the pitcher usually takes it, the opposing pitcher takes it upon himself to be like, all right, I got to hit this guy. You know, that's the unwritten rules of baseball. But I don't think like a second baseman runs up to the mound and be like, listen, this guy's talking trash to me. You gotta plunk that guy the next time he's up. I think I think most I think most pitchers are like, screw you, I'm not taking a I'm not putting a runner on base because this guy got mad at you. <laughs> There's Jaime Hawkins rising suns hollow for the heat. That'll go to Chad. But if the opposing pitcher threw at your guy. Yeah, someone, someone's going to, I think, naturally retaliate. There's Ben Shepard for the Pacers. That'll be for Joe. Jalen Williams, orange to 199 for OKC. That'll be for Sean Maddock. And there's our auto. Yes, Jordan Miller. For the clip show, that's going to be for Matthew. And I think if it's like a hitter trash talking a pitcher, I mean, I'll, uh, the pitcher doesn't want to put a runner on base, risk their earned run average, you know. It's PJ Tucker. It's going to go to the Clippers as well. I think they'd rather try to strike out the guy. It's a bit of a lost art. There's reigning threes, Kevin Durant to 99 for the Suns. 
There's a Seward Thompson for the Pistons. That'll go to Nicholas. There's Anthony Black. Slammy. 10 out of 10. That's a that's an ultra rare insert. Nice. My sister just sent me. Is that Clayton Kershaw? <laughs> yeah. At Manhattan Beach Creamery? Yeah. Look how nice he is. Not uh, putting, you know. Keeping his hands to himself. <laughs> <laughs> Surrounded by like three, like 20 yeah. something girls. Yeah, who is that? It's Anthony Black, my friend. Uh, yeah, like and he's just 13, like. Dude. They're not 20 something. Oh, they're 13. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, but they're older. Um, no, isn't your sister like. She's 14. Oh, I guess, I guess she just had her pop. Okay, that's right. There's. Uh. uh Michael's uh, little sister, along with her little friends, found Clayton Kershaw at a in front of an ice cream place. Wait, when was that? Right now. Just right now? He's not at the game? Or he's not at... He didn't travel to Colorado. He's just taking a day off. Breaking news, Clayton Kershaw not with the team in Colorado. He's in Manhattan Beach at an ice cream place. Taking pictures with fans. Kershaw, not a team player. Anthony Black out of 10. Slammy. That's an ultra rare insert going to Orlando. John Samuelson. You go, John. Clean Kershaw with, with, with a pack of preteen girls. <laughs> His hands are like right in front of him. <laughs> No, like, arm slung around his shoulder. No. I think Kershaw's a gentleman. Not a, not a Wander Franco. At least to our knowledge. All right. Rex loves when they mic players up. I wish they mic up players the entire game. It'd be fun to hear what people say here. Maybe Mumbo some of you may play. Yeah. Um... They get uh, they they get paid to get mic'd up, Rex. So I think it's more of a production cost. Otherwise, I doubt players would want to get mic'd up. But if you pay them. Um, in the Yan Dodgers Yankee series, Kike Hernandez was mic'd up, and uh, he was at third base. And during that mic up inning, he uh, he committed an error. And people asked him afterwards, you know, was did the mic up thing bother you? Well, he's like, no, it didn't bother me. Did that cause the error? No, it didn't cause the error. Would you not do it again? And he was just he was just like he was just like, well. They're paying us $10,000 every time we do this, so yeah, I'll do it. I think it was 10. For <laughs> fun. Yeah, come on, Rex. These are pros. They don't want they don't want mics on their bodies. People announcers talking into their ear while they're trying to play a very difficult game. Now, what I didn't know was the number I think I think Kike said ten thousand at least for that broadcast. I don't know if it was the Fox broadcast or if it was the ESPN broadcast because the ESPN does it too. I knew they had to get some kind of compensation. Now I don't know if that number is different for Kike versus someone else. You know, there's Alex English optographs. Nuggets, that's going to be for Joe Lawson. Red Hot Rookie, Scoot Henderson. And Rising Suns, Victor Wembanyama. For Sean and the Spurs. The Jared Vanderbilt to 39 going to the Lakers. That's going to be for Evan. Here's Jaime Jaquez 
for the Heat. Rated rookie car, that'll be for Chad. Now, I don't know. Now, what I don't know, I'm assuming there's some kind of conversation there too, but uh, where they interview a player who's not like a, they interview a starting pitcher with a day off during the game. I don't know if some kind of compensation is there for that. And there's 249, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Rising Suns, Jaime Hawkes, hollow. Amen Thompson for the Rockets, that'll be for Sean Maddock. There's the rookie, Scoot Henderson for Portland, that'll be for Adam. All of those are going to Adam. Trey Young to 249, Atlanta, Serenity with that one. I, um, I forget who it is. That was somewhat, somewhat recently. There's a Sewer Thompson, Red Hot Rookies Hollow. Norman Powell to 79. That's for the Clippers. That's going to be for Matthew. The Sewer Thompson goes to Nicholas and the Pistons. All the Amen Thompsons will go to uh, Sean and the uh, Rockets. Derek Lively, Jeremy Port. And Orange Duncan Robinson to 199 for Miami. That'll be for Chad. I think even in like, you can hear it every once in a while if you listen to enough uh, like pregame shows on the radio. I often hear it on the Dodgers network where where they'll have a player guest on and and then there'll be a sponsor and it's like, you know, this player guest was, you know, he will receive a gift, gift card to a, to a jeweler's store or something like that. Generally speaking, most professional athletes want to interact with the media as less <laughs> as, as little as possible. Ah, there you go. Joshua's got it. That was Miguel Rojas with the Dodgers a couple weeks ago. Two, three weeks ago. There you go, Rex. Dodgers still down to the Rockies. Yes, down by four. I think they're trying to scratch some runs back. Ooh, Miguel Vargas double. Yeah, Otto's popping early. This is nice though. Brandon Pazemski. Nice on card auto. Going to the Warriors, that's Chun Wei with Golden State. Eight out of 79, nice hit. Really solid rookie year. Nice. So hopefully that continues for him. There's more Jaime Hawkes's for Chad and the Heat. Chad also gets that Tyler Hero to 199. Scoot Henderson rated rookie for Adam and the Trailblazers. We got Jaden Ivey to 249. That'll be for Detroit. That's going to go to Nicholas. Rising Suns, Jason Tatum. 
Lights out Steph Curry. Colin Sexton to 199 for Utah. Tristan. Red Hot Rookies, Brandon Miller. It'll be for Tristan and Charlotte. There's the Rookies, Brandon Miller. Grayson Allen to 249 for Phoenix. That'll be for Andrew. There's Amen Thompson for the Rockets. That's going to go to Sean. There's Keontae Johnson to 72 out of 99 for OKC. Be for Sean. And a Victor Wembanyama, the rookies, hollow. This is the sort of stuff we want to see. There you go. Sean Maddock got the Spurs outright. Try to find a rated rookie like that. Maybe a, maybe a low numbered card like that. It's impressive because you have a hard time talking and doing something at the same time. Does not surprise me, Rex. If someone interrupts you while you're telling a story, throws you off. This, this is the difference between a uh, the mental strength it takes to be a professional ball player and where you are at. <laughs> Josh, like a, you're like you're like Josh's ten year old son. Yeah, he was talking. I was throwing. Your ten year old was watching with you and said, "I wish I could do that." I don't know. That'd be, that'd be pretty difficult. But I don't know. Miguel Ross is a pretty good defender. I feel like I feel like he's probably thrown thousands, if not tens of thousands, of baseballs from that position on the diamond. So that that shows you how comfortable he is defensively. That's for sure. golf instructor once told me that, uh, that that the golf swing is really only like a second. So all you have to do is concentrate for a second. I would imagine it's somewhat similar for the uh, for a play in the infield. Miguel Ross just has to concentrate for a second. 179 out of 199, Marcus Sasser. You just put the brain on pause, do your routine play, and then you're back. Back to chit-chatting. Marcus Sasser, Detroit. That's going to be for Nicholas. There's uh, Michael Bridges, 249. That's for Brooklyn. That's going to go to Joe. Scoot Henderson, rated rookie for Portland. That's for Adam. Andrew Nemhard, Pacers to 149. That's for Joe. Lights out LeBron. Rating three is Trey Young. And there's your auto. Jalen Pickett, Dominators, rookie auto for Denver. Joe Lawson with the Denver Nuggets. Sixteen out of ninety-nine. We'll do a little recap after this. Reggie Jackson to 199, 20 out of 199 for Denver. It's going to go to Joe. Victor Wembanyama, the rookies, blue, 14 out of 49.
I mean, the base cards and the hollow parallels go for a lot. I, mean, I don't know what's, what out of 49 is going to go for, but that is strong. Sean Maddock with the San Antonio Spurs. Nice stuff. Someone look that up. Marvin Bagley, 5 out of 10. Gold for the Wizards. And I think you'll, you'll be surprised that if you have not been paying close attention, I think you might be surprised at what that out of 49 could go for for, for, for Wemby. There's Amen Thompson for the Rockets. We've got Red Kyle Anderson, 73 out of 99. And the final box coming up. While putting a pallet out on the floor, you saw that they put up a little display that holds free fruit for kids. Has some single bananas, little mandarin oranges. What about for adults? Do I, do I get a free mandarin orange or a banana? That's true, yeah. Keep, can keep kids occupied, healthier. What people use? Yeah, what are, they, what are they buying them? Star Wars Oreos, right? Maybe you should trade that sleeve of Star Wars Oreos, Rex, for one of those bananas. Back on the interviews topic, Eric used to say, in-game NBA coach interviews drive you crazy. Yeah, I don't know what you really learn in those. They tape those, like, in between timeouts or in between halves or something like that. Those are pre-recorded, I'm pretty sure, Eric. Some of them are live. Well, I guess I guess baseball ones are actually are actually live, but they don't have to really manage. <laughs> but um, but in basketball, I think where you do have to be coaching, I think those are pre-taped, like in between quarters or during TV timeouts or something like that. But yeah, still, shouldn't you be drawing up plays or something like that? You're not really getting anything from the coaches anyway. Maybe they do some live, I can't. Maybe, next time, next time, well I guess we will have to wait until next season, but keep an eye out next time, because sometimes I get fooled too, I'm just like, wait a second, is he doing this interview during the game? But then I look at the background of the coach and, it, and guys are just warming up or something like that before like the next quarter or half starts. Even if they do the split screen. Pretty sure they're pre-taped. It's still it's still unnecessary though. Oh, TNT's live? Wow. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. Derek Rose to 149. Memphis, that'll be for Derek. Derek with Derek. Dominators, Anthony Edwards, Imani Bates, Claxton, Mitchell Robinson, 55 out of 99 for New York. That'll be for Derek. Rising Suns, Amen Thompson for Houston. Jared Allen, Orange to 199 for Cleveland. This is for you, John Samuelson. Red Hot Rookies, Grady Dick Hollow for Toronto. Derek, um, free agent window kind of open. If you can negotiate, teams can now, now that the final is over last night, as of that end of night, teams can negotiate with their own free agents. And then there's like, nice, here's Rui Hachimura for my Lakers, Elite Series. So yeah, teams can start doing that. I think the official free agent window is a little bit later. Uh, Evan with my Lakers sort of an up and down season last year had a great half season and playoffs with the Lakers the season before this current one and this current season which just ended 
think we Lakers expect a lot more from him. Maybe next year. Is Aaron Gordon to 249? For Denver, that'll be for Joe. There's Larry Bird. 30 out of 79. Reigning threes. That's going to be for Simon and the Seas. Rising Suns, Jaime Jaquez for the Heat. Nicholas Claxton to 199 for Brooklyn. That's going to go to S Joe. And Steph Curry, Rising Suns. And there you have it, gang. Optic basketball break in the books. Here's a recap. The hollow Wembenyama, the Pazemski was nice, the Rising Suns Wembenyama, the Slammy, 10 out of 10 for Orlando, that was for John Samuelson, that's the ultra rare hit, Dominators Wemby, Lights Out Hollow Wemby, Chris Livingston, and Blue Wemby to 49, 14 out of 49. Real nice. I went to Sean Maddock. And you've got a shot, everyone's got a shot, at the Chase the Mantle entry. So let's gather everybody's names. Serenity through Andrew and everyone in between. New dice, new list. One entry, name on top. After six, five and one, six times. Gets an entry to the Chase the Mantle. Good luck, everybody. Fingers crossed. Get the four leaf clovers. Get the lucky rabbit's foot. One, two, three, four, five. And once more, sixth and final time. A lot of sad faces here, but we still got a lot of entries to give away. So keep trying. So two through 30, sad times after six, but thank you for trying. Happy times though, real happy times for the top name. And that's Matthew Lane. Matt, I don't think I called your number at all this break. What team did you have in here? Kings, I don't, there wasn't much for the Kings, but listen, uh, you got an entry into that mantle promo, you've got a chance at something much greater than that. Thanks for getting in. Thanks, everybody. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Keep chasing the mantle.